All right, so let's do a Q&A. Uh, I basically bought some uh, like polo shirt, turtleneck shirts uh, that I've, I'm, I don't know, I have this like idyllic or idyllic image in my head of like how wearing a turtleneck kind of looks really good. Uh, so I'm trying to get one that I feel looks good. I think the white one is probably the best choice. This is just a black, plain black one. Anyway, let's do a Q&A. Just before we get started, I just want to say that with these Q&As, when I post them on Instagram, if you want to uh, be part of it, you can follow me on Instagram. And I basically post a story where I tell you guys to ask me some questions. And then I kind of go through them before I do this Q&A and I look at like what I think is a good question. And also I try to find questions that a lot of people are asking. So I'm trying to answer as many questions in one question as I can. So uh, if I don't answer your question, it might be because not that many people are asking it or because, uh, or because the answer requires just a really long explanation. So that could be why I don't answer your questions. And also like when I post one of these things, there's like a thousand questions that I have to go through. So it's not super easy to have time to actually go through and answer each question. So that's why I kind of try to make it a little bit more effective. All right, so let's start just running through some of these questions. First one is, can you make a living just by freelancing? And the answer to that is, yes, you definitely can. And you can make a pretty good living by doing just that. And in relation to that question, we have another question here. How much can you earn with freelancing compared to a computer science full-time job? And this is something that you can earn a lot from doing freelancing, because if you do free freelancing, you're not necessarily limited to yourself. You could basically slowly get started at doing like a software development, like creating a software development firm essentially. So you could, once you get enough jobs, you can start to hire extra people and then that there's like no limit to how much you can make from that. So you can make a lot of money doing that. And I think you, their potential to make money from doing that is bigger or greater than it is from a full-time computer science job. Uh, so you can make a lot from freelancing. And next question is, can a first year computer student get a job? And that's, yeah, you can absolutely get a job. I actually got a job before I even got started on my computer science degree. So like before I had any knowledge and before I, uh, before I had actually started studying, I actually was applying to a lot of jobs to just try to see if I could get one. And I was able to actually get one just by uh, essentially selling how much I was excited to learn how to code. So uh, that might be a unique experience, but I think there's definitely opportunities, especially within your first year, because within your first year, you'll learn a lot of things. So yeah, I absolutely think that you can get a job as in your first year of computer science. Okay, and this uh, is a question that I thought was really kind of interesting, and that's what scares you the most when starting a new project? And uh, I think the, the thing that scares me the most, I'm not really scared of like attempting something new because I know the option to fail is always there. So I, I'm not too scared of like starting it other than the fact that I'm scared of like how long it's gonna take because usually for these YouTube videos, I'm kind of under a time limit or I'm trying to make them, uh, I don't wanna spend like months and months trying to build something. I usually, a lot of the projects that I do, I try to do within one day. And a lot of times I have the expectation that it will take just a couple hours to do it. And that's always what I'm scared of is like, is this gonna take my entire day trying to build this really quite simple thing? Usually that's what happens. It's something fairly simple and it ends up taking the entire day. Um, so that's usually what I'm scared of. It's like, how much time is this gonna take from me? Oh, and uh, while we're also on the topic, this video is sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist is an app that takes the best tips and tricks and insights from thousands of different nonfiction books and condenses it down into 15 minutes that you can either read or listen to. Most of the books that we read, we read in order to find the few key tools and takeaways that are in there that can help us. So with Blinkist, you get incredibly high information density. I've come to use Blinkist daily. Anytime I'm commuting, when I'm at the gym, when I'm making food, I'll be listening to a book on Blinkist. I've used Blinkist in different ways. I've listened to books that I've read in the past in order to get reminded of the lessons that are in there. And a recent one is The Lean Startup. I also use it for books where I need the information fast. If I'm working on a project and I find a book that can help, I use Blinkist to quickly get the lessons from that book. 
and it's become a great tool for me so I really cannot recommend this enough. The first 100 people that click the link in the description will get one week of unlimited access completely free and you can of course cancel at any time. You will also get 25% off a full membership. So again, definitely sign up for this. There's a link in the description. All right, another really good question is, what was the best project that you have made? And I think the best project that I've made is probably my GitHub project initialization thing that I have on GitHub, which is essentially uh, an automation that I did fairly quickly when I started this YouTube channel, I made that automation. That was a really popular video as well but it was something that I didn't think would be popular when I started it. But afterwards, I've kind of realized how useful that automation actually was. And what it was, was essentially, instead of having to, like when you start a new repository on GitHub, you have to go to GitHub, you have to create a new repository, you have to copy that, copy the remote, and then add that into your uh, personal like computer and then, or the terminal, and then that's kind of how you get started. There's just a lot of different steps and a lot of things like you add a readme and stuff like that that I just automated in that process. So now I can just type in create and then the project that I want to create and that creates a folder, it creates the GitHub repository, it commits the first commit, it also creates a readme file and it just basically automates my workflow and makes things a little bit easier and it's one of those super useful automations that I did. Another one that I did that I'm really happy with is a very recent one, which is the startup automation video, where I basically created a bot to uh, find names to startups and then cross check with like domain names to see if the domain name is available. And if it is, then you get that name suggested. So essentially, if you're looking for a name for a company and you don't know what to name it, then you can provide a word list uh, to that script and that will then cross check and find different potential names for your company. Uh, I used bird names in that video, but you can use any type of list. And that was something that I think is really useful and that I think I can probably use in the future at some point. Um, so those are kind of the two projects that, I'm, that I like the most. I haven't given this too much thought, so there may be other projects that I've done that I'm really happy with. All right, final question, and this is, what's the most efficient way to learn a new language? And to me, I think the best way to learn a new language is to, like for instance, if you wanted to learn Python, Python has a really good tutorial page where you can just go through and kind of learn some of the basics. I wouldn't spend too long doing that. I would spend maybe just an hour or two kind of like looking at it a little bit to try to understand how it works. This is assuming that you know how to code in other languages. Uh, and then I would just get started on a project. So, so essentially learning by doing instead of learning and then doing. Because usually when you're learning a new language, the reason that you're learning it is because you're trying to build a project or you have a project in mind for that thing. And I would say just get started on that project and that way you'll kind of learn the things that you need to know as you go. Because otherwise you can get stuck learning different things that you won't actually end up using in the project. So I think the most efficient way is just to get started on a project in some sort of way. And so that's kind of my advice for what the best way to, or the most efficient way to learn a new language is, uh, assuming that you already know a programming language that is. All right, that's uh, gonna be it for this Q&A. I think uh, we got some really good questions there. When I look at the questions that you guys ask, I'm getting like better and better questions each time that we do this. And also, if your question wasn't answered, it may be because I've answered it in a previous video, or it may be that it was too complex and it might require an entire video just to explain it, uh, like I said at the start. So, so I would go back and kind of look at the videos that I've posted. And I post Q&A videos every Tuesday, so that means that if you just go back and look at the Tuesday videos, and you can see uh, some of the Q&As that I've had before and some of the questions that I've answered. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it for this one.